Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and in this episode I'm going to tell you about what I consider to be one of the hardest fighting sharks I have ever caught. It's called the Galapagos Shark. We were actually using a technique for yellowfin tuna that's called chumming. It attracts the fish to the boat. Pieces of cut up cubes of meat, all fish meat, it sinks down through the water and attracts the tuna. And once the tuna start feeding on them, even though it might be really deep, eventually they get closer and closer to the boat and they hopefully will take your hook bait. Of course, by putting pieces of tuna in the water cut up like this and pieces of bait, then you're going to attract other things like, yes, booby birds there and the other one is called a frigate bird. This one is a frigate bird with a big delta tail. Both species tell you the tuna are around. Also, you're going to attract other species like sharks. Now we had and were having some great sport with nice big fat yellowfin tuna. Unfortunately, when you get tuna like this, that silver flash in the water, all those vibrations being given out, you also attract sharks. And this is where we were getting eaten out of sight by Galapagos sharks coming in, crashing into these tuna in the last minute, ripping them off the hook. And if we got them in the boat, the tuna, we considered it a result. One evening session, we didn't even get a tuna in the boat, I don't think. We had to stop fishing. There were so many sharks there. And eventually, we did manage to stay attached to one of these sharks, but it wasn't a big one. Well, is 150 pounds or so, not big. Even if he's got the other line in the mouth. It's brisky. Any more fun on this side? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pack this one up. I'm gonna find you alive, leave you alive. Just here. Well, after our success of previous night, this is all the sharks the next day left us. A piece of a 50 pound tuna chopped off completely behind the head. That's how big some of these sharks were. So we thought, hey ho, we're gonna try and hook up to some of these fish. Do you know what? We couldn't land most of the sharks we hooked. They were that big. We were there for the tuna, but look at the blood coming off of this tuna head. And all we did was lower it down. We could still tuna fish at the same time and sit and wait and hopefully get a Galapagos shark coming in towards us. Now, although we didn't actually hook one on this particular session, we decided to go out earlier in the day and that's when we started chumming. I had the idea of using a fine chum, breaking out with my fingers and also hanging the carcass of a jack over the side of the boat like this to attract the sharks. And boy, did it attract the sharks. Phil gets hooked up to a fish I don't think he stopped once to turn the handle. And look, there's another one in the water, a monster shark. Phil's fighting a shark, it's not this one. This is a monster four or 500 pounder. Look at this guys, right by the side of the boat. That's him. Yeah. Right, it's all done. Got some. Is that no, anything done now? Was that the drag? Is it? Yeah, right. Now let's drag deal on. with them now. Um, and we started chunking for tuna. Uh, I lost one well over 100 pound, uh, playing it for about 40 minutes. Um, right now, Phil's up, up to what we think is a shark because it's nearly de spooling him. And there's three big sharks at the back of the boat. One of them's definitely over 500 pound. We've just been teasing it with an uh, amberjack carcass. And we'll show you some of that footage as well later on. But um, we'll get back to this fight because it looks like his TLD 25 is about to be emptied. Been on it, what, 45 minutes, I guess? 45 at least, yeah, on this one. And what's he on there, uh, Kev? What's the gear? Um, he's on a, a 30 to 50 Tiagra rod, Shimano TLD 25 with 80 pound braid. And he's only got a 200 pound mono leader with a 10 0 hook. So as soon as he's got this in, this one's going out. 600 pound wire. And uh, we'll get one of these sharks right up next to the boat. Yeah, 
The other thing we're going to do while Phil's been fighting this fish, we've had a bit of teasing up here and they're just chopping half amber jacks and carcasses in two. I've got a dart tag with me and I'm going to try and maybe dart tag, free dart it. If I've got enough of length on a little three foot stick, we can lean over, maybe get a dart tag in one of these huge, huge Galapagos sharks. It's very rare to tag them. We we'll see how we get on. Yeah, just left him running, that one knows that. That was slow-mo. That would be brilliant. He needs to bump it with the tip of his nose, so he just fix that electronic switch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. This is big, big, big ass shot. Big shark there. Yeah. Spooked away. Well, Phil unfortunately lost that fish after the best part of an hour. Put another bait out. Kev lost another shark. Really, really big fish. We started chumming again. Thought we'd be all right for tuna and there's now it's even worse there's four four huge galapagos sharks around the back of the boat we're going to try and stick a dart tag in but it's only a short stick fingers crossed we'll get to tag one of these free free swimming one if we're lucky yeah i thought one had a long tail to it That big boy just came up with chalk. You put a bit. Throw a few cubes over. Maybe you can throw a few cubes in and try and draw them up a little bit. Yeah, we done. Yeah. You're nice and slow. Funny feel. Brilliant. <laughs> Got it. Tag's gone. Tag is, as they say, deployed. I think I could be, according to this, running out with tags. Look at the size of this one coming up again. Another huge, massive shark under the water there. That's the tag in the back. Is that the one with the tag in his back? Yeah. There's a little white tag, is it? There, that yellow, extremely with the yellow in it. There's a little one. Oh, that's all right. It's hanging there, that one. They are all, all big sharks. You the long Long enough to be We tagged two free swimming sharks to at least 500 pounds, just dark tag, that's brilliant. We're going to try now, drop a bait, Kev's going to try and drop one of my traces over the side to him, but pick out the fish, because obviously they're almost, almost impossible to catch on just regular stand-up tackle without harnesses. But what we're going to do is we're going to spell it, all the anglers on the boat have a go, see if we can't get a smaller one up, and by small it's probably two to three hundred, you might be able to get one close up, but see what we get on the camera. I think it is. We've just got a small piece of tuna on the hook here. We've got about six Galapagos sharks behind the boat, and we're trying to catch the smallest one, which is about 250-ish. The biggest one there is getting on for 600 pounds. But we've me and Phil have both hooked monster sharks up to now today, and without a harness on with a butt pad, it's nightmare on. 50 pounds stand up. Next to impossible, it? yeah. It's next to impossible. You need the harness, so you need the chair for the size of some of these and the way they fight. So we'll try and get the littlest one out of these so we stand a chance. So 
So here goes not. Here he goes. He's got the soil on. Yeah, soil on. He's on, guys. Well, he's not on, but he's eating it. <laughs> a disaster struck when one of the sharks rolled across a line and snapped it like cotton. There's so many sharks down there, it just must have gone straight across the back of one of the big four or five hundred pounders. But even after our totally feeble attempts at trying to catch these sharks, Big Dave came to the front and finally brought one to the boat. He's probably going to go. Oh, I should tag him. Oh. Easy. Well done, Dave. Tagged in. There's the tag. The best part of you need. Yeah, well, got one. Yeah, I've seen quite a lot of <laughs> Better to be lucky than skillful, that's what they say. With success, on top of the surface I decided to put the underwater camera together, popped it under the surface, OMG, the water is alive with monster sharks. I couldn't review the footage until I got back to the UK. When I did, I was absolutely gobsmacked. Look at the sleek, perfect lines of these sharks and they're not scared at all of anything. Now, a little bit about the Galapagos shark, a little bit of history. They were first named around about early 1900s from the Galapagos Islands, but it's found out that they're actually what they call a circumtropical species. In other words, if you drew a line around the equator, they like to hunt and feed around there, and they love deep water, underwater sea mounts, which is basically a volcano coming up out of the bottom of the seabed in deep water they also like deep oceanic islands basically islands in the middle of nowhere I mean look at this fish absolutely magnificent now then something else interesting here guys and that is this species is a known cannibal most of the smaller Galapagos sharks stay close to the shore because they don't want to be eaten by mummy or daddy when I did a bit of research on the internet about it it said the shark largely feels like feeds on bottom dwelling species. I fear not you scientists out there. Here they largely feed on anything they can get inside those jaws and that includes a 100 pound yellowfin tuna. They also have a somewhat fearsome reputation. I did read that it says, and I quote, this species is considered potentially dangerous and may attack if a food source is present, such as during spearfishing activities. If there are large numbers of Galapagos sharks present, it would be wise to limit one's activities in the water. <laughs> you don't need to tell me that, pal. Just check it out, put your head under the water and take a look at them. I also looked at the rod and line records just to see what the biggest one caught on a rod and line was. It has down the all tackle record of just 308 pounds. How can that be? Most of the sharks you're looking at here under the water are over that weight and it said the maximum recorded weight is 430 pounds. Not according to my skipper who says he's seen them to wait for this. A thousand pounds in weight. Now here's something unusual, just wait, here it comes, here it comes. Yes, there's a tag in that 500 pound shark that I put in. Wait for this, two to three hours earlier. The shark was undeterred by the tag. He swam away when I tagged him and he's still come back for more.
there you have what must be, surely, the most unique footage you're ever going to see anywhere on the Galapagos Shark. But it didn't end there, because I have one more evening session out there for Yellowfin Tuna. And yes, a shark, rod, reel and trace did get taken along. And finally, I battled my way with a monster shark that the skipper put at £600. That's well, almost twice the world record. And there was another skipper on board as well, Kev Mackay. Luckily, Kev had his phone with him and he ran a little bit of video on it. It's not going to be great footage. It's all we got. It was a rough night, but he put the fish at nine feet long by the measurements of the trace because it was his trace. That was some shark. What a way to close out. Man, I can't wait to get another bait in the water. <laughs> Yeah, still filming now. I'll stop this film now and then I'll cut to when we get it back in. What do you think of that, Graham? Hey, mate, it's way too big. <laughs> Just keep it slacking the drag off a touch. Yeah. Crazy foot.